So, as I say, welcome to this evening. Um, it is our welcome evening. This is our first opportunity to have a conversation with you. To see some of your smiling faces is fantastic. Although I have already been in one or two of the schools over the last few days. Um, I was in Copner earlier last week. I took part in Westover's fire alarm they had earlier this week. I got caught up in that and saw the whole school, which was lovely. And we've been down into Lyndhurst today. So we are beginning already to visit the various schools. So a little bit of information about some of the senior members of staff then at Admiral Lord Nelson. So you've already just met, I say, although it's virtual, um, myself and Miss Hardingham, Mrs. Hardingham. But we've also got the four members of staff um, along the bottom there. So Mr. Doherty is our senior deputy head teacher. You'll see him there. Mr. Hutton is also our deputy head teacher at the school as well. Mr. Fenner, who's the assistant head teacher, and then another person who is important to some people, um, depending on what their needs and so on are, is Mr. Morgan, who's our coordinator for special educational needs and disabilities. So they are sort of key members of staff that I wanted you to just be able to see what they look like, if you like, just in case over the next few weeks you do need to speak to any one of us about various things. It's always good to put a face to a name. So during the summer term, when you're finishing your time at, Admiral, at, at your various primary schools and getting to know us, these are the things that you can be expecting from us. So first of all, there'll be a welcome evening, which is tonight, you're already here. But if any of you need to leave early, I know already somebody's posted in the chat that they need to leave early, or if you've got friends at the schools that you go to that were unable to come tonight, we will post it onto our website. So don't worry to anyone that's missing it, pass on the message, it'll be posted onto our website. Then over the next few weeks, um, I will be posting various videos, little short videos, two or three minutes, that will introduce key staff, answering any questions that people send in via maybe their year six teachers or by email or whatever it might be on our website. And I'll show you where on the website that is in just a moment. Various visits to primary schools. So like I said, I've already been in um, to Copner, to Westover and to Lyndhurst over the last few days. Um, I will visit all of the primary schools. One thing I, I sort of want to emphasize is that we actually have 19 different primary schools. So there's quite a lot of you where only one of you is coming or two or three are coming from a, a particular primary school. And I don't want you to worry at all about that because there's lots of you where only one or two people are coming. And we will ensure that we sort of match you guys up together a little bit so that you're not feeling all on your own if you've left and, and some of your, your year six friends have gone somewhere else. So lots of primary schools we visit and I promise we will come and visit every single one of you at your primary school. And obviously you will be invited here. So all of those things will happen. We'll visit the primary schools and you'll get a parent information booklet that your child will bring home with you parents on the day that I come in to visit them. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Then we're going to invite each of you to family meetings, one to one meetings um, with your year six child and parents to a meeting with a senior member of staff. So it could be one of the members of staff already mentioned um, on the initial screen, but it could also be um, some of the other senior leader staff, some of the heads of department, the heads of house and so on. But it was just a chance for you to individually ask us anything you want to ask us, find out a little bit more about the things particular to your child and also tell us things that you think it's really important we need to know about your child. We find the quicker we get to know you, the better. So that, you know, that look out for that. Those will happen in the first three weeks after May half term. So that so most of June, look out for those meetings and they'll be after school. Don't worry, you won't have to miss any school if you're in year six. They will be after school meetings. And then, as you know, we have the transition days in July, two transition days that I'm going to tell you a little bit more about now. So. So that's, this is the website. So if you go to our website, which is lns.co.uk, you can see that that's what the front of our website looks like, the first page of our website. And if you go to the learning tab along the top, so along the top of the screen, there's an information section, um, which you might well want to have a look at. That's got various policies and, and so on on it. This might be useful for you, letters and that sort of thing. Then there's some sections, obviously, for the staff, for the parents. and But there's a learning section. And if you go on the learning section and you it's a drop down menu right at the bottom, you'll see year six starting in September 
2021. And you'll see all of the different booklets and things that you might need, the letters that you might need. There's um, a virtual tour for you to have a look around. There's videos from all of us, all sorts of bits and pieces. And it will grow as the term goes on. We keep it absolutely just for this year group. It's not a, an old thing from a few years ago and some of it's out of date. It's absolutely new for this year and lots of things uploaded as this term goes on. So do keep an eye on that. Really, really useful, I hope, for you to get to know us a little bit more. So the transition days. The transition days are on July the 5th and the 6th. So a Monday and a Tuesday in July um, later on in the term. And it's really a chance for you to experience learning at ALNS trying out lots of lessons. So trying out some lessons that you don't normally have maybe. So um, technology lessons, science lessons, that sort of thing. But also experiencing what a maths lesson might look like at Admiral Lord Nelson or an English lesson or a history lesson, whatever it might be. Also gives you a chance to meet the staff and really importantly, discover the building. I have found that um, an awful lot of the students over the years, what they worry about is, will I get lost? Will I know where everything is? And actually, a chance to discover the building is really important. So looking around, finding your way around, we're not expecting them to know their way around till probably mid-September. That's absolutely fine. But it's good to have a little opportunity to get a feel for where things are. Have an experience of the canteen. Try out the food. So we'll give you your food both days. Try out what our food is like. It's absolutely lovely i have to tell you our, our catering team hamilton's is our catering team they are absolutely incredible so you'll get a chance to try out the food and also to try out the system for the food so queuing up for food making choices and so on and so forth you will at the end of the second day find out your house and your tutor group and also your teaching group so your house, um, if you've got a brother or sister at this school, and I know that I think there's 90 of you that are coming up have got a brother or sister, you will be in the same house as your brother or sister. So you might already know your house, but what you won't know until the end of that second day is your tutor group and also your teaching group. And that's not your group for all of your lessons, but it's your group for some of your year seven lessons, your English, your humanities lessons, geography, history, and so on. So over to you, Mrs. Hardingham. Now, when Mrs. Hardingham starts speaking, we're not in the same office because of COVID and so on. And yeah. only one of us can host the call. So she's going to have to be a little bit like Professor Chris Whitty when he does his COVID briefings, if you remember the government briefings. And she will have to tell me next slide, please. Over to you, Mrs. Hardingham. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, the curriculum and also about what we stand for um, here at Admiral Lord Nelson School. So. This slide um, is uh, one that has the three core values that when I uh, became head, I mean, been in the school for an awfully long time. Um, and it's, you know, I've been really proud of this school for 20 odd years that I've been here. Um, and it was to try and encapsulate what it is that makes this school so special uh, to all of us. And so these are the three words. And the first word is inclusive. Um, and for us to be inclusive, it's all about that sense of belonging. It's all about, um, we want everybody to feel as though they are part of a genuine family, the, the ALNS family is what I call it. Um, and just by being part of the school, you are part of the family. And like in any family, once you're in it, there is no way out. And so you are stuck with us. And you know, one of the testaments to that is how often we see our students coming back to tell us how well they're getting on or just to catch up with us. Um, but no matter what happens at any stage at all, you are always part of the family. That's absolutely fundamental. We want everybody to feel that sense of belonging to our school community because our school community is the people in it. It's not our old reputation or things that we've done for years. It's the people that are in it today. That's what, it's, that's what matters. Um, the next thing in order to get us in a state where we can really succeed in our learning is all about focusing on our well-being and how we feel, getting ourselves in the right place to learn. And that comes from looking after one another and caring for one another and being kind. And that is really important. It also comes from talking to each other a lot as well. So that consideration of feeling as though you belong and then feeling as though you're well cared for and looked after, th those two things have to be in place 
for anybody to make educational progress. So when things are not going well, when we look at uh, uh, trying to solve a problem, it's usually because of one of those two things. And so by focusing on those first, we then we can then say, right, well, this is a school where we want the very best for your child. You know, we have the highest of expectations. That's in everything that we do. And you'll hear staff talking about doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do, not because you're showing off because somebody's watching you, but just because it's the right thing to do. And that's how we try and approach everything here. And um, we'll have the highest of aspirations for your child um, so that they can have the best future possible. Next slide, please, Ms. Holman. And we, we encapsulate all of that in our motto, Dare to Dream, Aim to Achieve. We're really mindful that your child gets one chance at secondary school. And one of the things I will say to your child in assemblies regularly is that they really do deserve the very best, the very best school in the country. And that's what we aim to be as a school community, the very best school in the country. Um, and you know what we want to do is we want to develop a curriculum which i'm going to go on to talk about we want to make sure the curriculum we provide for your children is relevant to them and inspires them and excites them so that they excites them to want to follow their dreams but not just you know what we want to do is encourage them to have really big dreams really big dreams for themselves and to be to have the courage to be really bold with that and then our job with the curriculum is to equip them with the skills and the confidence so that they can go on and achieve those dreams. And that's what our motto that was formed by the original uh, 12 staff and 100 students of the school is all about, dare to dream, aim to achieve. Okay, next slide. So going on to our curriculum, how we organise learning. Our curriculum is everything that takes place, every interaction, every communication. Uh, the bulk of it in a minute I'll go on to talk about is around the lessons. But it's also all of the things that we do outside structured lesson time. And it's also the those um, informal opportunities uh, that we have. And it's also our ethos, how we are, who we are, what it is to be part of the ALNS family. That's all part of the curriculum experience as well. So moving on to the next slide, this is about the formal curriculum. So the lessons. Now we have uh, one hour lessons. There are 25 of them a week. We work on a, a two week timetable and within the day we also have as well as the five lessons we have a 20 minute tutor period and during that tutor period your child will be in a tutor group with children from year seven through to 11 and they will do lots of activities that are around developing themselves as an individual understanding their place in the world uh, becoming a responsible citizen um, all of those sorts of things. Um, alongside helping to keep them organised, listening to their concerns um, and uh, providing them with an opportunity just to uh, bond with one another and with their tutor. We have a two week timetable and the way that we spread those 50 hours is that for English, Maths and Science, there'll be seven hours. For PE, there'll be four hours. For Geography and History, there are three hours each. There are five hours of languages and in year seven everybody studies French and German and then there's an opportunity at the end of the year to specialise in one of those two languages and then later on um, in year nine you can pick up a second language which is Spanish if you want to opt for doing a second language as well. Um, we also have six hours a fortnight of design that's taught on a rotation um, roughly every eight weeks and so those subjects are art and textiles, graphics, uh, food um, and 3D design. I'm really excited for next year because we've got uh, two food rooms. So I'm hoping that we can spend even more time um, with the children being able to cook than we've been able to do previously with just one food room. Um, we also have an hour of fortnight, which is called Aspiring Futures that you can see at the bottom of the slide. Um, that's where we do the personal social education, the health education and uh, relation, some aspects of relationships and sex education is taught through their, um, that, ask, that um, hour a fortnight as well. Um, and, um, and we teach predominantly in mixed ability groups. So we create teaching groups and predominantly most of the lessons are taught in those teaching groups. So it's the same groups for English, history, geography and languages possibly slightly different groups, but fairly mixed again for maths and science, 
And then there are smaller groups, slightly different um, for the practical subjects. So all the practical subjects are pretty much the same group as well. So although it's 250 children, um, actually your child will be with predominantly the same children for lots of the lessons. So it's, 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 in, it's adding that change gradually as we progress through into year eight where the classes will all be quite distinct and quite different. Students obviously move from lesson to lesson and they're all taught by specialist staff and um, we're, we're always a popular school for staff so recruitment's not an issue for us really and so we're fully staffed by specialists which is lovely. Okay, next slide, please, Ms. Holness. Another thing I just want to talk to you about is the personal development curriculum. So um, the sorts of things that are in the personal development curriculum are all of the trips that we do. Um, and we have a number of themed events. Uh, um, nor in a normal year, we would have about 12 days during the course of the year where we wouldn't do the normal timetable. We'd do something different, but within the year group. Um, so for year seven, there is a big day trip to Boulogne in July each year where we have five coach loads um, go off at the, in the middle of the night, about three o'clock in the morning. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so here's the picture for Boulogne that's in the, in the square there. And we all um, sit around and we order a meal and have lunch together and we go and explore the castle. Um, so that's one of the big nice highlights of the year. Another event that we do towards the start of the year. Uh, are you ready, Miss Holness? Um, we go to the Weald and Downland Museum. I have to flip back a few slides for that one. There we go. So we take everybody out for a trip to the Weald and Downland Museum as part of the history curriculum. And we also do team building events. Um, and then there are various themed events depending on which year you are. Uh, there's a Harry Potter day. I know that I think was in year seven a couple of years ago. We have a CSI day where we try and solve a murder and there's lots of forensic science. Um, we have stock market challenge, there are two sports days that everybody does sports day here, staff and students, one in winter and one in the summer. Um, and we have design days, just, just lots of things really. We have some relationships days, we have an Africa day, an Asia day, uh, lots of different opportunities to just experience learning slightly differently. Can you move me? That's it, brilliant, thank you. So um, another thing that is part of our, a, a really important part of our curriculum is our longstanding connection with um, schools in the Gambia. And in fact, we're connected with uh, other schools uh, internationally as well. It's really important for us that your child uh, develops and understands their role as a citizen, uh, both locally, nationally and globally as well. And we're really committed to being a rights respecting school and to our work with UNICEF in that regard. But we've had a long standing link with the Gambia for um, getting on for 20 years now. And we have a relationship with a school that um, uh, educates orphans. And uh, we fundraise for that. A lot of our fundraising days, our non uniform days, uh, support the salaries and uh, educational supplies for those schools. Uh, and also, um, during the course of year seven, we have a three week project, which is a cross curricular project, takes place in May, June, where every subject um, teaches and educates us about culture in the Gambia and we, we work in partnership together um, because there's lots that we learn from our, our friends in the Gambia uh, in the same way as there's lots we can do to support them. Um, when you get to year 9, 10 and 11, um, if you wish, you can um, go on the residential trip to the Gambia, which takes place in the Easter holidays, and you can actually go and meet some of those students and the teachers that we support, and also have a bit of a holiday as well. So you, you, there's an opportunity to go and see that uh, culture in practice as well, once the students are old enough to go and, and do that, which is just a wonderful, uh, a wonderful experience. Okay. Um, can we go to year eight camp? So this is another lovely highlight to look forward to. Um, we take everybody to year eight to camp in Brockenhurst at the end of year eight. Um, wonderful bonding experience, take the whole year group in two halves of the year. Um, and we're really excited that we're actually probably going to be able to do that, fingers crossed, um, this year again. So it's just a couple of pictures to show you about that to look for, things to look forward to. And also, um, just moving on, um, we also have the Duke of Edinburgh opportunities for your child as they progress through the school, if they're interested in taking that outdoor education experience further. And we have lots of students that enjoy doing the volunteering and the expedition side uh, of uh, the Duke of Edinburgh award uh, as well. Okay, next slide. 
Thank you. So just a few things for you as parents to watch out for as you're thinking your way forwards towards September. It's a little bit early to think about that now, but it'll be on this PowerPoint for if you want to revisit it at a later point in time. Um, watch out for that two week timetable um, and, and be prepared to be helping your, your child to navigate their way around that timetable and to work on having the right equipment at the right time in their bags. The last thing that you want is for them to be carrying everything around all of the time. So you want to develop a routine with them where they are selecting the, the books and so on that they need. And watch out for what we call independent learning. We'll tell you loads more about that in September when you join. But independent learning is what we call homework. And um, there is an app so you will be able to see it all and you will be able to um, help and support as well. So just watch out for that. that. That often is a change of family dynamic in terms of how you're going to work that and how you're going to support and help. Um, extracurricular clubs. Uh, as your children arrive in September, uh, yeah, towards the end of the first or second week, we will publish our clubs list. There are lots of opportunities to take part in clubs. We don't charge for any of our clubs. They're all run by staff on a voluntary basis. Um, and so I would they're great opportunities to make uh, new friends or to meet people outside of your uh, outside of your academic groups. And um, so strongly encourage uh, your child to, to give them all a go. You don't have to sign up for the whole term. You can just go see what you think um, and then continue with it or not as you choose. I talked a little bit about PD days and how we try and have as many trips as possible. We're about trying to create memorable experiences. Yes, brilliant lessons with memorable experiences, but also other memorable experiences that will help your child to grow and flourish and to identify their talents and so that we can nurture those. And then another thing just for you to watch out for in February, we have a day that we call mentoring day, where we invite you to come in so the children all learn um, independently at home and we invite you to come in with your child for a, a short 15 minute session just to review their progress face to face with their tutor. Obviously this year we had to do that by Zoom, but we're very much hoping to uh, return to doing that during the course of the year. It's a lovely opportunity just to step back and reflect and, um, and, and to have that nice bit of communication during the course of the year. That's on top of the normal parents evenings that we have academically, and there'll be a welcome evening in September with your tutor as well. Okay, is it over to you now? Oh no, one more from me. Okay, so one more, this is really exciting. Um, so in July last year, we launched um, a Chromebook leasing scheme um, and hoped that it would be successful and that it would be something that families wanted and were absolutely overwhelmed um, with how popular it was. So as a result, we um, in Key Stage 3, we probably have about 90% of the students that have a Chromebook as part of this Chromebook leasing scheme. Um, and uh, the way it works is that you can, you, you're offered the opportunity, and I stress it is an opportunity, it's not compulsory, you're offered the opportunity to purchase a Chromebook uh, through, a, through a company. They are, uh, they call them ruggedized, so they're, they're super robust, they're touch screen, it says touch screen and flip, so I'm assuming that means the turnaround so that it can look like a tablet, that's my assumption. Um, they're touch screen Chromebooks. And they come with a, as part of the cost, they come with an extended three year warranty, which has no excess and is unlimited accidental damage, uh, repair or replacement and unlimited theft uh, replacement as well. Um, so you can opt for that on a three year, two year, one year monthly payment, or you can pay upfront and outright. Um, it allows us to load all of our software um, onto, onto the Chromebook. So it means that you have access to all of our software as well. And, and so it can be used in lessons and it can be used at home. And because we've got so many students that have Chromebooks, teachers plan for Chromebooks as part of their lessons. So that adds, um, it just adds an extra dynamic. I walked past the lesson today, um, which was, um, had a, a member of staff who's got a bad back um, and suddenly wasn't able to come into school but was able to deliver a remote lesson. The children were all sat there with Chromebooks while there was a cover teacher in the lesson, but the learning was still able to go to go ahead. Now, we also make sure that um, children from um, families that are entitled to free school meals are not disadvantaged by providing a considerable subsidy um, for this. And also, if you don't wish to be part of the Chromebook scheme, that you're not disadvantaged in lessons 
um, we have Chromebooks in school for students to use as well. So, um, but I hope you'll be excited by the scheme. There'll be a letter coming out tomorrow and lots and lots of information and details and about costs and so on and, and what you need to do. If you've got any questions, there's a, a way that you can feed those questions into us. But I hope you'll think it's great. It's transformed learning, I have to say. And, and it, the children have loved having their own devices. Um, and I see them sitting around the school at break times and they're doing things on their Chromebooks and so on as well. It, it's, it's a great opportunity and I hope it's one that, that you'll be excited by. Over to you now. Okay, thank you. So keeping in touch with you. So just really for us to give you some information. Um, so most things go by email. Um, I've sent a couple of letters out now to ask you to fill in the Google form with your email address. And the vast majority have done that. Thank you very, very much. Um, so mostly we will send things out by email. If you haven't uh, filled in that Google form, the link is on the initial welcome letter that you received and the one we received about this meeting. So you know, I can't emphasize enough if you could let us have an email address as quickly as you can. Uh, so the letter will go out to you by email if you get a letter. So, for example, tomorrow's Chromebook letter will go out by email. Um, if we haven't got an email address for you uh, until you join the school, then it will be posted. So the Chromebooks for anyone that's not given us an email address will be posted out tomorrow. But more generally, we send things out by email. So it's really important we have your email address. The calendar and that sort of thing is all on the website. And there's always sort of a rolling um, thing of news articles on the website and also on all our social media as well. So we have um, mostly we make use of Facebook and of um, Twitter, but we've also got various Instagram pages. So each of the houses has an Instagram uh, page, lots of departments have one as well so there's lots of social media if there's anything urgently we need to tell you we would do that by text message and then there's also a, a sort of our main communication between you with you is called insight and insight is a web uh, page whereby you can have a look at how your child is doing in terms of grades their attendance if they've been late if they've got praise and reward points and that sort of thing also if they've got sanctions so detentions is all on there and in September, we'll tell you much more about that. You'll get given a password and you can log on to that and have a look as much or as little as you like. Once a week is perfect. Have a good chat with your child each week about how the week has gone. But we do have parents that actually stalk their children pretty much and have that their, their own work on one computer screen and they're logged into Insight on the other computer screen and then they're checking up what's going on. I don't advise you to do that. Bit too stressful. Let them have a bit of freedom. But that is is where that works and how that works <laughs> but I would certainly would suggest as I say get us your email address as quickly as you can in terms of you keeping in contact with us you know hopefully I've, I've spoken to quite a number of you already by by email with different questions hopefully you've already got the idea that we we are we pride ourselves really on keeping in touch with you well and in a timely manner, getting back to you as quickly as we can. But it is slightly different from in a primary school. So in a primary school, at the end of the day, you can often grab the teacher or first thing in the morning. Often you've got the head teacher on the school gates or whatever, if it's like my primary school, my children's primary school, and you can get access to anyone quite quickly. But obviously it can't work like that in a secondary school. You know, we've got over 1100 children here in September. It's not possible for everybody to quickly see the head or even necessarily myself or the deputy heads so your first point of contact is your child's tutor so your child will have two tutors in some cases they'll both be teaching members of staff but it might be that one is a teaching member of staff one is a support member of staff but you'll have two tutors that you can contact by email or telephone or whatever you might want to contact your child's head of house that would be absolutely appropriate too and you'll be able to do that and you'll have details about that and one of the lovely things about having more than one child in the in, in, in the same house is that if you have something that affects your family for example and it could be something that's quite difficult to talk about um, you don't have to tell and get the message to three different heads of year for example or tutors you've got one central head of house who will look after your family for the whole five years or even more if you've got more children that you are here so they can be contacted as well and if it's a specific issue you might want to talk to a specific curriculum director for example the, the person that is in charge of English or maths or you might want to speak to Mr Morgan who's the Senko for example it's normally easier to email us because we we do all have a teaching load and we are all busy and away from our computers email him we are able to get back to you 
relatively quickly by email. We certainly sort of pride ourselves on doing it within 48 hours and often it's quicker than that. But they would be the ways in which you contact us. So getting ready for September then, the things you need to do over the next few weeks, really important so that you're feeling you're going into the summer holidays in a really good place ready for September. So first of all, what I say is look out for that parent information booklet. I hope it contains everything you'd need to know about us. It's got sort of more formal things such as things like attendance, what to do if your child is ill, what we do if your child falls ill here. It's got things like some of the behaviour policy and the rules. It's got um, information, more information about our curriculum, our uniform, where to buy our uniform, what they need in terms of PE kit. Just about, I hope, everything is in there for you. Keep an eye regularly on our website. As I said, this Zoom meeting will be on our website, I hope tomorrow, probably, if not by Monday, certainly. And everything else that we do will always be on the website. So if you miss meetings or evenings, it will be on our website, but also letters, information, the, the information booklet, for example, uh, uh, electronic copy of there will be on there in the next few weeks and so on. Like I said, make sure we've got your email address. Really important if you can get that into us. If you can't navigate or find the link for the Google form, just ring into us. That's fine. Just let us have your email address. Before you go buying um, bits and pieces for September with uniform, discuss it with the school if you're not sure. So obviously the basics are easy, the polo shirts and, and, and the jumpers and so on. But if you're not sure about some of the rules around, I don't know, haircuts, for example, or shoes, just give us a ring and check it out rather than anything going wrong in September and your child feeling in any way worried about what they might be wearing and so on. I hope that everything's in the booklet, but if it isn't, do get in touch. And then, as I say, join the Chromebook scheme. Ideally, it is voluntary, as, as Mrs. Hardingham said, but the majority of students do do it and really have um, enjoyed being part of, of taking part in that scheme and making use of their Chromebooks. I certainly know as a teacher and as a teacher who has been teaching a very, very long time and was quite worried about technology and all the things we've had to do. Um, I thought, oh, Chromebooks, not sure about that. It's absolutely transformed my practice in terms of bringing it way up to date and in terms of the interactions that we can have with the students and some of their engagement and their enjoyment of, of the subject. So I can't emphasise enough how that good that has been, actually. So you'll get that letter tomorrow. Um, and the deadline for that is the 10th of June. And that's really important. That deadline can't be extended because the company only opened the window for our school for a certain number of days. So, you know, get that in your calendar get that letter back as quickly as you can um, and just very quickly I've just my my head has just been drawn to a question on the chat that I'm going to address very quickly now yes um, so the polo shirts and the PE kit is house colours so the polo shirt um, has a piping of the house colours around the neckline of the polo shirt the jumper is the same for all houses um, but the polo shirt has a piping of be it purple or the blue it's all the colours that are in my PowerPoint there for you um, and then the PE shirt is um, also in the house colour so, yes, if you're not sure the house colour, it is all in the booklet. But once you get the information as to what house you're in, you nip down to one of the uniform suppliers. They know everything that you need and, and what's going on. So you can always ask them. So over to you, Mrs. Hardingham. Thank you. So thinking as a parent and my son has just finished secondary school. Um, so what are the what are the ways that that we would advise you if you're new to secondary school what do you need to be thinking about as to how um, you want to help your child so um one of the things i would say is come to all of the evenings we can't promise you that they'll be the most all singing and all dancing evenings but they will be full of information and they will be opportunities for you to hear um directly from all of us and opportunities to ask questions um be prepared to help with organization um, that can be one of the most challenging things and um, you know the more you've read the things in, in preparation and the booklets and so on and the, and the more you're prepared for it's just a little bit more to think about in org organizationally um, the more you can then calmly help your child one of the things for me that I hadn't really anticipated was the stress around getting food technology ingredients together um, and actually getting the information from my son um, you know, more than the day before. Uh, it seemed to, mine, mine appeared in a, on a piece of paper at the bottom of his bag and, and I had to remember to ask him for it and then hope that we had the things around the house. So if you know your child's got food, uh, gird your loins and just prepare for um, uh, helping to support getting ingredients and so on together. 
similarly, you know, with PE kit and, uh, and that sort of thing. Um, I think, you know, as I hope you've got a sense of, we are a talking school. Uh, talking is important. There's no problem that can't be solved if we don't talk. We can find a solution if we talk about it together. Um, and that's the same, I think, for you with your child as well. So if you've got worries about the school or they've got worries, then talk to us. Start with the child's tutor. Um, you know, share what you think. We always love to hear positive feedback. So if you've got anything positive you want to say, that's always lovely. But equally, if, if you only want to make contact with us when you need, when you need to, um, because things aren't quite going well, then please do say as soon as, as, soon as it happens rather than waiting um, um, and things getting bigger than they need to be. Um, we want to really, we want you to feel as though this is a partnership. Uh, you know, it's, it's your child um, and staff at school and yourselves and together, you know, as strong as we can make that partnership, the best your experience your child will have over the next five years. Um, watch out for independent learning. I've mentioned there's an app. Uh, again, just be prepared and having a think about how you're going to factor that into the uh, time after school. We do have an information centre, um, which is open till sort of 4th, 4.30, depending on the day. So there is the opportunity for your child to stay in school and um, work on homework. Um, um, and we've got some support for that as well. Uh, equally, you might want them to, to work, they might prefer to work at home and you might prefer that as well. Uh, you know, either option is available. Um, and in terms of you and your child, you know, keep talking together. Do expect that friendships might change. Um, they do tend to change um, during the course of the first, certainly the first and the second terms in year seven. That can sometimes be quite a challenge. Um, uh, you know, it brings new opportunities, but it, you know, at times it can be quite difficult if somebody you've been close friends with for a long time doesn't seem quite as interested or vice versa. Um, and it's quite usual uh, during the course of year seven for a child to have some friendship falling out at times as well. Some, some students navigate it with no difficulties at all, um, but it's not unusual to have a few friendship falling outs that need resolving along the way. And just prepare you know, your child will start and they'll be full of adrenaline and full of excitement and they'll last on that for, for a while. And at some stage, they will just become exhausted by just how much, uh, how many new things they are coping with. And, and there will be some, step, they'll need a lot more sleep, probably. You'll see them being a lot more tired. And there may be some stages where they just have a bit of a meltdown because it all gets a little bit too much. That is, again, quite usual. Just prepare for your child being more tired than usual by school. They're in year six at the moment. They know exactly how things work. They're used to it. They're the oldest. They're going to come here and be the youngest with so much to learn and so many different things asked of them. Um, and we will provide loads and loads of support, but just be prepared for them being a bit tired. That's all. Um, anyway, so let's go back to my final slide. Go to my final slide, which is much more positive. Sorry. Oh, sorry. what's happening there? That's your uh, final slide. Yeah, thank you. Um, just to say, I, I hope this has been a really useful evening for you. I hope it's been good just to hear from Miss Holness and myself about things that are coming up. As Miss Holness said at the beginning, this is just the start of a very long transition process um, and lots of opportunities. Um, and I'm just so excited, really, really excited to see you all. Can't wait to get to know you all and to get to know your wonderful children um, and to welcome you into our ALNS family. So thank you very much for being here this evening and for listening. And um, do just email us or send any questions in um, as, as uh, Katie said before.